What's up YouTube, Mike here with another video and today I finally wanted to do wrap up my review of the HP Chromebook X2. So I've played with this thing for about a week off and on and I'm finally ready to share my impressions of it. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I really wanted to focus on is the hardware and this is by far my favorite feature of this device. I think right now for a two-in-one Chromebook, this is the best one you can get just because of the design. It's the first actual detachable Chromebook. So that makes a huge difference, especially if you're going to use it in tablet mode. For me, it's personally personal preference where I don't like folding it back where I feel the keyboard. So having the ability to actually detach it is really a nice feature. And the build quality, again, is just really amazing. So for the price, obviously it should be a nice build, but I got to say it feels very sturdy, very heavy, and heavy in a good way, as in heavy and not cheap. But I think the aesthetics are really nice, but again, that's personal preference. You might you might not like it, but I think the white really looks nice. And the keyboard itself is actually a really nice design. And a lot of folks ask me about lapability um, in the comments of my unbox, and I asked for questions about it. And the biggest thing was lapability, and really there is no issue whatsoever using this on your lap, because in the keyboard, HP actually built in some counterweight. So the keyboard actually does feel fairly heavy by itself, but that's to obviously counterbalance the screen of the HP Elite X2. So that way it doesn't tumble over, over on your lap. So they kind of had to do that. They had to make it heavier is what I'm trying to say, or else it would topple over. So they essentially use the keyboard as a counterweight for the screen and it actually works really well. Now going around this thing, as far as ports are concerned, you've got two USB-C ports on either side. You've got, a headphone jack and then you actually have a micro SD card slot which you can use to expand the memory which in the case of this since it only comes with 32 gigabytes of storage you're going to need that micro SD because if you're going to download a lot of Android apps that space is going to start to go pretty quick so you are going to need that micro SD slot so it's a good thing it's there now this thing has a beautiful display it's a 12.3 inch touch display it's a 2400 by 1600 resolution and it's just very bright and crisp. I don't think you'd have any issues with this outside. Uh, the only caveat is it is a fairly reflective display. So if you've got a lot of bright lights over you or the sun to your back, then it may be a little harder to see. But as far as brightness goes, it's really bright. Just a really nice looking display. It's basically the same panel that they have on the Pixel Book. So you're not losing anything when it comes to the display. It does have two cameras. Now this is the only Chromebook that I know of that actually has a rear camera. So it's got a five megapixel front facing camera and a 13 megapixel rear camera. Now, don't let the numbers fool you. The cameras on this thing are really terrible. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I haven't found a Chromebook yet where the cameras are good and that's not necessarily a limitation of the hardware. It's the software for the camera app on a Chromebook is just horrible. It's horrendous. So hopefully in future updates, that'll continue to improve. But as it stands right now, the cameras are very grainy and just not that great. Now, the rear camera will be sufficient if you're just going to use it for scanning documents, like in a business environment. Um, as long as the document's well lit, it'll be plenty crisp and clear for that because you're only going to be six inches from it. But using it for anything else is just not a good experience at all, and I don't recommend it. Now this also, for the hardware, includes an active pen. Um, comes with a battery. It works really well. The only downside is compared to the Pixel Book pen is it doesn't support tilt. But other than that, it's, it's a nice pen. It works well, and I'll talk about it here in a minute. All right, so moving on to the specs of this device. This thing comes with an Intel Core M3 processor, which is a one gigahertz, one gigahertz base frequency, and it'll go up to 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, it's got 4 gigabytes of RAM and Intel graphics um, 615, and then it's got 32 gigabytes of storage, like I mentioned. Now, initially, depending on what you're doing, um, having the 4 gigabytes of RAM is not a limitation at all, nor is the processor. However, I found during usage of this that it would get extremely hot, especially while drawing. So I'll transition right to the performance. Like I said, my, I had my daughter actually draw on this and she used it for about an hour and a half. Um, and it was at 100% battery when she started. And after an hour and a half, it drained 50% and it got extremely hot. Now, I mean like worrisome hot, but it didn't slow down at all. 
So the performance never degraded, but um, this is a fanless design, but it does get extremely hot. And again, I think it depends on the app. Um, for whatever reason, that particular app, which was a sketchbook, got really hot. But for drawing, she said it was actually really good. Um, the only downside is it's got kind of a, a very hard tip, so there's no friction. So it's very slippery. So it's literally writing on glass with plastic, and it felt just like you would expect. So to me, it felt exactly like using an Apple Pencil on an iPad without a screen protector. So very slippery. Personally, I don't like it, but you get used to it over time. But I'll try and show you some of the drawings that she did. But she had a pretty good experience with it, and it seemed to work well, other than the tablet getting extremely hot and the battery draining really fast with that particular app. Now, I will say, performance-wise, I pushed an external display because that's just the way I like to use my Chromebooks. I like to bring it home, I'll dock it, and I use an external display and a mouse. And... I did notice that it would stutter a couple times compared to using the Pixel Book or my Chromebook Pixel 2. And I think that's a limitation of the, the RAM, to be honest with you. So if they were to put 8 gigs or eight gigabytes of RAM in this, I don't think you would notice or have any issues with it all, with it at all using an external display. So I think it was the 4 gigabytes of RAM that limited it. But if you're not hooking this to an external display and you're using multiple tabs in Chrome, I don't think you're going to see a stutter at all. So I think that four gigabytes of RAM will be sufficient for most users. It's just me. I like to use an external display. So in that case, I did notice it stutter a few times. Now, as far as the speakers go on this thing, um, I think they're sufficiently loud. I mean, you're not going to break any records with quality or anything, but I honestly had no issue with it whatsoever. They seem to get nice and loud. It didn't sound bad to me, but you may have a different opinion on it. What's up YouTube, Mike here with another video and today I wanted to do my review on the Google Pixel Book. Now I did an unboxing of this and first impressions a few days ago and I've actually had quite a bit of time with the device now. So having used Chrome OS for a while now, it's pretty easy for me to come to a conclusion on this. So without further ado, let's get into the review. Now when it comes to running Android apps on this thing, this is where it's good and it's bad. Um, it's really good having the detachable form factor. So it felt exactly like having, you know, a 12.9 inch iPad in my hand or something. It felt very natural, light, and just like a tablet. And it ran out Android apps pretty well. I'll show you a gaming demonstration, but I tried some games on it. Um, I played a Need for Speed Most Wanted on it, and it worked well. It was light. It was responsive. And I also tried playing a PUBG on it, and... The settings had to be set kind of low based on my device, and but it did run all right. It was a little laggy at times, but it seemed to run okay. Now, as always, I like to use the Microsoft Office Suite, and it ran those without any issue whatsoever. All right, so let's get to the brass tax of this thing, and that's the price. Now, right now, this thing fluctuates between $600 all the way up to about $650. And right now, I got to say that I don't think that price is, I guess, justified. And it's not necessarily the, the limitation of the hardware. I think it's great hardware. It works well. It's really, in my opinion, it's the Chrome OS is still not justifying that price. Just because Android apps are still kind of hit or miss when it comes to running on a Chromebook. And for 600 bucks, you can really get a nice uh, Windows machine, to be honest with you. And even now, you can find MacBook Airs out there, the lower end model, which you should never buy. But it still will do more than the Chromebook will do. So yeah, so in my 
my opinion, this suffers is the same curse of the Pixel Book. It's too expensive for the capabilities, and Chrome OS needs to catch up with the hardware to justify such a high price tag. All right, one thing I did forget to mention on the keyboard is the touchpad. Um, the touchpad, it's efficient, it works well. I think it's a really nice size, but I did notice that it's just not as slippery or smooth as what I'm used to. Instead of it being a glass trackpad on this, it's actually a plastic trackpad. So it just, I think the more you use it, just the natural oils from your skin, and your fingers will actually help it uh, glide better. But initially it felt like I was kind of skidding across the touchpad. So I, I didn't like it initially, but I did find the more I used it, it kind of smoothed out a little bit, but that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but again, if you're gonna use a mouse, an external mouse, it doesn't really matter. All right, so to wrap this up, I mean, this was kind of fast and furious, but I gotta say I had really high expectations and high hopes for this device initially. Um, in a lot of ways, it lived up to that, mainly being the hardware, but in a lot of ways it kind of let me down as far as performance. Um, I didn't think four gigs of RAM would be a huge limitation until I was trying to run the external monitor and it just kind of stuttered at times. And then I gotta say, I was very disappointed with how hot it would get running certain apps specifically using the Sketchbook Pro app. I mean, it just got honestly almost too hot to touch, uncomfortably hot. But again, the device didn't slow down and the battery life was also kind of a disappointment. So HP touts that you're gonna get 10 hours of use out of this. And to be honest with you, I think that's closer to about six on the low end to eight. And again, if you're drawing, that's gonna be all the way down to three hours. Because like I said, my daughter drew for an hour and a half straight on it. The screen brightness was only about 60% and it literally drained down to 50% in only an hour and a half of use. So it's going to be kind of hit or miss. So I think a lot of those limitations can actually be fixed in software. And again, it's not all HP to blame. I think a lot of it is the actual app developers are still not necessarily optimizing their apps for tablets and or Chromebooks. So Overall, though, I think it is a good device, but I would not recommend that you buy it until it goes on sale. So I still think 600 bucks is too steep. So if you're looking to get into the new premium Chromebook category, I would kind of skip this until it goes down and maybe catch, again, the Pixelbook on a student deal when it's down to 750 or less and or go with the 2015 like I've got. I've got the 2015 Chromebook Pixel and I still really, really like it. All right, so as always, thank you so much for watching. If you've not subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And if you hit that notification bell down below, that's going to let you know when new videos drop. And if you have any questions on this device, just drop it down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.